Hello everybody and welcome to another Expanded Investigator Guide. Today we're going to be talking about Parallel Skids O'Toole. So if you don't know what the Parallel Investigators are, um, for now four of the five core set Investigators, we have a Parallel version that the designers made as a free print and play version of them. They're like kind of like the same kind of spirit of the character, but different, Parallel. They're just a little bit stranger. They have uh, different abilities. Um, some of them have different stats. And some of them also... Uh, they, I mean, I think actually all of them have different deck building restrictions. I can't, you don't quote me on that one, though. I actually don't know that for sure. Skids uh, definitely does, though. Parallel Skids. Uh, and then <clears throat> when you play with a Parallel Investigator, you can choose to use the, your advanced personals and weaknesses. Uh, and if you use one, you have to use the other. So, Parallel Skids O'Toole, he has two brain, <clears throat> three book, three fist, and four foot. Uh, as you can see, this is one of his weakness because he still just has Skids' stats. Skids' stats, as we have talked about on this channel before, aren't really exactly that great. Um, but he does make up for it with his strengths, which is good consistency and a very, very strong economy. Uh, so he gets that from his ability, <clears throat> which as a lightning bolt, once per round, you can spend up to three resources and test a base skill value of three against a difficulty equal to the amount of which you just spent for resources. If you succeed, you gain twice the number of spent resources, and only foot and wild skill icons may be committed to this test. Uh, so it's kind of like basically like a, a watch this you can get for free each turn without like really having a downside if you fail, other than the fact that you've just lost resources. His Elder Sign... They can also get negative scenario tokens too, depending on what yes. uh, yeah. scenario you're doing. It would suck to like be trying to make some money and just get smacked by Azathoth. Or, yeah, or like, yeah, just like put Doom on something, like uh, anything. In. Yeah, you're like, hey. Uh, and his Elder Sign effect is plus one. Choose a level two or less card in your discard pile. Add the chosen card to your hand. So he has a little bit of recursion built into his Elder Sign. His deck building options are Rogue 0 to 5, Fortune 0 to 3, Gambit 0 to 3, and Neutral 0 to 5. In addition, his deck size is only 25, so 5 less than the normal. Uh, and then his, he has this additional option. When you upgrade a Fortune or Gambit card, you may instead pay the full experience cost of the higher level version and leave the lower level version in your deck and it does not count towards deck size or the number of copies of that card in your deck. So this allows you to, uh, as people on the YouTube channel said, have six luckies in your deck. You can buy zero, twos, and threes and just load up on those cards or other things that may <laughs> there as well, but it's a way for you to kind of bend the rules with skids. Um, another one of weaknesses here with uh, Skids O'Toole is uh, he just kind of like pats himself on the back a bunch uh, or uh, as it says in the guide but I did not want to put on this screen it's a little bit circle jerky he's kind of just like doing his own thing uh, and then sometimes he's taking risks that can be bad like for example gambling in a situation where there is a bad token in the cup and then he also could lead to play styles where like you're just like I have so much money obviously you're going to be building like a big money green deck that to the point where you're just going to keep gambling even though you have enough money and then you're just like i mean i i'll use my well connected on this test to be up seven and gain six resources that sounds good to me false justin there is no such thing as enough money it's true it's true i, I don't have that mindset yet yeah like i think this kid is in a bit of a tough position like gameplay wise where there's definitely reasons to play him like, his uh, upgrading with the Gambits and Fortunes can be quite strong. He's got the smaller deck size, which is nice. Um, and, like, the economy is also nice. But a lot of the things you'd want to be doing with him, there's other investigators who do them better. And Skids is ne this parallel Skids is niche is he kind of... He gets to, like, do them, like, better than average, but also, like, do another thing kind of good. You know? Like, if, if you're going to play, like, a big money archetype, you're probably better off playing, like, Jenny or Preston. But Skids is better if you intend to, like, play a big money archetype, but also 
like you get to abuse the fortune and gambit thing, right? Mm -hmm. Or um, someone like Winnie might be better at playing a succeed by X archetype, but Skids also gets to the benefit of having strong economy alongside of playing that. Not nearly as well as Winnie does, but he still does it like pretty okay. Uh, one thing to know with him is that if there ever are cards that take advantage of passing tests, he can get a free zero test each turn. So, like, you can potentially do some busted things that way if the card pool ever goes that way. And also just, like, um, that free test a turn can really, really do things. Um, Bryn, why don't you talk about the uh, his personal and his uh, um, uh, unique weakness? All right, well... Our advanced options are on the land, again, still kind of not amazing. Uh, this one is a little bit better, though. <clears throat> the difference here is that you can play it during any lightning bolt window instead of just fast during your turn. And at the end of the round, it, each enemy that is engaged with you, you get to disengage from them and move to locate up to two locations away. So it's kind of like a Weirdsmobile shortcut. Uh, the, 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 like I don't I don't think it really matters one way or the other which uh, which set you pick because uh, the upgraded weakness is still hospital deaths which was already one of the softer ones in the game mm -hmm. um, where we get to as a lightning bolt we can move uh, move a resource from our resource pool like maybe some that we've won from gambling. Uh, up to three times per round, and when the game ends, if Hospital Debts has fewer than nine resources on it, you earn two fewer experience for this scenario. Uh, hospital Debts is uh, one of the main reasons that it is one of the softest ones in the game, is that punishing your experience doesn't actually hurt you that badly. Uh, like, you can definitely just choose to eat it, especially in the later scenarios of the campaign. Uh, secondly, with our small deck size, it just sits in play. It never goes to our discard pile, ever. We like we we draw it, we put it into play. It just stays there even after we've solved it. Solved it. Roland wishes he got to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he really does, doesn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I, either either one could be good. They're both uh, like it. It kind of doesn't really matter. My, my personal opinion, I think that upgrading them is playing the advanced ones is better most of the time because what the hospital deaths is only costs three more resources and for the reasons that you outlined like kind of doesn't matter mm -hmm. and then you're on the lamb also like actually does something <laughs> yeah i suppose it does turn on the lamb into a card that isn't just a glorified skill card yeah you've got other yeah like it is it's for it it's almost um it's like an elusive yeah i was gonna say it's almost like an elusive yeah yeah, not quite as flexible, but also like doesn't cost you any money. Yeah, and doesn't cost. You... Yeah, it doesn't cost you any money. <laughs> and you can like hold things for investigator. Uh, you can hold enemies for your teammates. But yeah. All right, let's move on to the core set. And Travis, I'll throw these ones to you first. Hey, green cards. Hey, uh, we got pickpocketing up first. This is a two-cost asset. Commits for a foot, and as a reaction, after you've evaded the enemy, you can exhaust pickpocketing to draw one card. Skids already gets the uh, money side of the economy pretty much handed to him. So this is a good way to complete that equation. Get yourself some card drop, provided you can consistently evade enemies. So you pro you'll have to build around a little bit, but it's not too hard with four foot. Got the 41 Derringer. Um, if you don't own the Winfred deck, this is one of your very few weapon options in green. Um, the three cost asset that commits for a fist takes up one hand slot, three ammo. As an action, you can spend ammo to fight. You get plus two punch for the attack. If you succeed by two or more, the attack deals plus one damage. You're probably already going to be uh, putting cards into your deck to like try and succeed by some because that's what his ability is. So like pushing yourself you should be able to put together enough uh wild or punch symbols to push yourself over the hump to make this card worth it maybe not as a primary fighter but like as a flex investigator it should be pretty solid next up we got leo de luca who's just like the base green ally that you run if you don't want any of the other ones it's a six cost asset commits for a book takes up the ally slot can soak two health and two sanity 
and you just get an extra action. Um, as always, just like 33% more turns. So there we go, elusive here. This is a uh, two cost event that commits for a book and a foot. It's fast. You play during your turn. You get to disengage from each enemy, engage with you, and move to a revealed location with no enemies. Um, untabooed, this card is just like really good. It's a lot of actions for uh, no actions. <laughs> and that's good. That is good. That is good. Uh, Brain, why don't you take these ones? All right, next up, we've got Backstab. This is a three costed event. We fight, we use our foot instead of our punch. The attack deals plus two damage. Uh, so, firstly, three money for three damage is a pretty solid place to be uh, in terms of one shot combat effects. Secondly, our foot number is likely going to be much better than our punch number most of the time, uh, especially considering how our like investigator card functions. We kind of only want to be playing skills that commit for foot. Mm -hmm. uh, so the more often that we can use our foot score instead of another score, the better. Uh, we've got sneak attack, just two costs, deal two damage to an exhausted enemy at your location. Exhausting enemies is far from difficult. Uh, especially playing green, and it is just testless damage. It's a way that we can contribute to the game rather than just being like, look how much money I have. <laughs> that is nice. Yeah, yeah, that right. is nice. That's pref yeah, preferable. It's, uh, it's I'm large. Dying. I have yeah. 20 money. <laughs> I have enough money that Dario gives me plus brain and book. I'll kill you. No, we got Opportunist. This one commits for a wild, and we can only commit it to a skill test we are performing. Imagine that. We can't make somebody else be opportunistic. Mm -hmm. uh, if you succeed by three or more, you get to return Opportunist to your hand after the skill test ends instead of discarding it. Um, most of what this one does is probably going to be get thrown at the base skill test that you get to make with your lightning bolt effect because it's a wild symbol. Mm -hmm. uh, and you probably shouldn't be too obsessed about getting it back every time. If you get it back once or twice, it's that's, that's worth. After that, doesn't matter. Emergency cash. Uh, it's just money. Yeah, but it also emergency cash in parallel skids. It ain't three money. It's a chance at six money, baby. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance? Yeah, I'll roll the dice. I'll roll them. <laughs> Always, man. Um, I didn't say this at the start of the video, but if you see this little elder sign on a card, that means it's part of our staple series. You can find links to those videos down in the description below where we talk about them in greater detail. Uh, speaking of staples, we got a bunch of them here. We got Guts because Guts is just, you know, brain tests are good. And, you know, two's not as bad as one. Like, this gets you to four with skids, which is, like, you know, not bad. Uh, it's not great, but it's not bad. We got Unexpected Courage, which helps you boost up any test as well as when you roll the dice <clears throat> to see what your ability does. Uh, and the same with manual decks, as Bryn said. You're going to be using your foot for the majority of the things you do, and uh, it works for both your ability card and also just for evasions, which you're going to be doing as a rogue character. Our first non-rogue card that's a fortune is Look What I Found. Uh, it's fast, play if you fail, skill test by two or less while investigating to discover two clues at your location. You have three book, so odds are you'll probably fail if you wanted to, like... Like, Skids is in that spot where he can fight, or he could get clues, depending on how you build him. Um, I've tried both with parallel Skids, actually. I do like the, um, fighting one version of him more, but the, um, the fortunate, like, the look what I found uh, side of it still works. So for our core set experience cards, we have Sure Gamble. This is a two cost, three experience that when you draw a chaos token with a negative modifier, you turn that minus into a plus. Uh, if you, this can be really good on important tests, or if you wanna make your teammates angry, you use this when you're gambling against yourself. <laughs> that would don't, definitely yeah. not be worth it, but man, would the table just absolutely love it. Um, but this is, it's great security for like a big test, especially because you're not going to be testing like with number big that much with skids. Like you can get there with a well connected to like really be sure of it, but your stats just kind of don't let you do that. So sure gamble is a good way of giving you some security there. 
Uh, close call, two experience. It's a it's a fortunate survivor card. Fast player after a non weak non weakness non elite enemy or location is evaded. Shuffle that enemy into the encounter deck. It's basically you defeated that enemy and now it's someone else's problem in the future. Hopefully not yours, but I mean you could probably manage it if it is. Um, Lucky's just a great card. Um, there's also the level zero version, um, but they're both uh, staples that you can put in this deck. No problem. And then we got upgraded Leo DeLuca. He costs one less. And uh, as Travis said, if you're looking at like a base investigator and you have a smaller um, collection, Leo DeLuca works. But there are some better options that you can find in Skidzo Tool that we'll be talking about very shortly. Travis, I'll pass this next slide to you. Excellent. This is High Roller. Um, it costs four experience and it also costs three money to play and it gives you ten resources. Wow. Mm hmm. That's just plus seven resources, and you don't even have to throw a test at it. It's true. All right, Travis, I'm going to pass you the next one. Or it could also be like three oh. resources if you're ambitious. It could over be. Over several minutes. <laughs> I, li I like your thinking, Travis. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here, why don't you continue on into Dunwich Legacy as well? Sure. Oh, look at these cards. Um, Narrow Escape is a zero-cost event that commits for two feet. It's fast, you play when an enemy makes an attack of opportunity against you, you get to cancel that attack, and you get plus two skill value for the next skill test you perform this turn. So this one's nice when you have something like a, a card like Small Favor that you want to play, um, and you can like eat, use this to dodge an attack of opportunity, and then do your action, and then the next thing you do, whether it's like punch or uh, investigate or something like that is better. Um, it also just commits for two feet, which is good symbols for green investigators and it's a fortune cool next up got lone wolf it's a one cost asset that commits for foot to limit one per investigator reaction when your turn begins if there are no other investigators at your location game and resource this one is pretty easy for skids to abuse well not abuse but like trigger mm -hmm. because he uh he, he's very capable on his own he doesn't he can get clues he can fight monsters he can evade monsters not too much is going to be like directly threatening him and require someone to come help him. Um, not like a, a seeker or a clue getter or something like that. So, so we got quick thinking. This is on the Staples video, but basically, it lets you turn your lightning bolt action into a, a real action. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got level two switchblade, one cost asset. It's also on the Staples video. It's just one of the better fighting options for skids. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all right. Bryn, throw these ones to you. All right, hey. we got Relic Hunter, extra accessories, like maybe lots of cigarettes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, all kinds of things. It's just cool. Uh, Charisma, extra ally slots. Unfortunately, you can't have two Leos in play, but there are many, many good uh, level three and higher green allies. And maybe you don't want to give up your Leo. So that's cool. Uh, we got Streetwise. This one lets us spend money to be either better at foot tests, so you can spend money to make money. That's that's just kind of cool. <laughs> or you can, you know, more realistically use it to be better at investigating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a it's a permanent. It's just strong. Uh, we got upgraded opportunists. If you are playing with the opportunist route, you almost definitely want to upgrade this as soon as possible. Uh, the difference here is that you get to return it if you succeed by two or more, and instead of three or more. And three or more is tough. Three or more you got to make happen, but two or more, it's already given you one. Yeah, and one thing we should also probably talk about briefly that we uh, we missed in the thing, and it kind of relates to opportunists. Like being two up is like where you want to be on standard. Like that's kind of like where you're expected to go on a test. So you're this is now putting you three up, and then you'll be fine. Um, this skids does get worse at higher difficulties, especially because the cup becomes <laughs> more difficult. So um, just yes. something to be aware of with this guy. Uh, Bryn, you only got really two cards there, so why don't you keep going? Okay, you get one more card. <laughs> Very generous, Justin. Yeah. We got uh, we got the ace in the hole. So this one is level three. Just kidding, it's exceptional. It's actually level six, more or less. Wow. Uh, but it's zero to play, fast, only during your turn. 
you can take three extra actions this turn. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just free take another turn. Yep. Which Real is strong. Which is good. Yeah, very strong. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the path to Carcosa. Uh, and I got watch this. This is a skill that commits for a brain, a fist, and a foot. Commit only to a skill test you're performing. An additional cost, you get to spend up to three resources. And if you exceed by one or more, gain twice that many resources. So, yes, I'll say it because I know all of you are thinking it at home. You can use this on your Lightning Bolt ability to gamble twice in one action. Whoa. And then you draw the auto fail and Travis freaking yells at you, man. <laughs> uh, Can't confirm. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I don't reckon, even though that is funny, I don't recommend it, right? Like, the thing about Skid's ability is that you use it just as it is, right? It's just like a small little, like, even just, like, gambling with one resource to be three to one, you're up two, you'll gain money, right? Like, that's good. With Watch this, you can be a bit more ambitious because, like, if you're testing your foot, you're now at five, right? So you're more likely to succeed by one. You don't want to, like, double dip on this, uh on his ability. Watch this is more for like other things when you're just starting out. We got Dairy Maneuver, fast. Play when you would succeed at a skill test. You get plus two skill value for that test. Um, this is like good for the succeed by um, two build if you wanted to go with that. It also does provide some security like if you are doing watch this and it also commits for a wild which helps you for your printed ability on your investigator card. Then we got Cheap Shot. Uh, this is a fight, and you add your skill, your foot value to the skill value for this, this attack. If you succeed by two or more, you automatically evade the attacked enemy. Um, you know, you get a fight at seven, and that means you're probably going to succeed by two or more. Uh, also, it costing two is just, like, really not a problem for skids. He makes money like there's... He's just... He makes money. That's what he does. Uh, then we got Dario. He's a four-cost ally... Uh, soaks for two and two, and while you have ten or more resources, you get plus one brain and plus one book. And as an action, if there are no enemies at your location, exhaust him to gain two resources. It's Dario seems like you know he'll he'll be um, easy to get there. And yeah, in this skids, it actually is pretty easy. Like you can get to like twelve or more resources on by like turn three, uh, pretty quickly with this guy. Uh, so like you could get him activated. It's just a question of, is this the ally you want? And is he, like, maybe a placeholder for some of the much better level 3 allies that we have coming for skids in the next few slides? Uh, and Bryn has a very... He has a relationship with Dario that's not... Ex they're not exactly friends anymore. They were for a tiny bit, but not anymore. Is that right, Bryn? I'm not okay with the idea of paying 14 to buff two of my stats one time. That's fair. That's fair. Not anymore. <laughs> All right. Uh, Travis... These ones are yours. Yeah, lock picks. This is your level one. Uh, this is one of the green staples. It is a premier way to get some clues and succeed tests by a lot. Uh, we got sneak attack level two. It's cost two to play. Commits for book fist fist and deals two damage to an enemy not engaged with your location, as opposed to level zero version, which only gets exhausted, guys. Um, this one's particularly useful for just, like, drive-buying an enemy that one of your other teammates is holding. Um, or if you play a card like Stealth or On the Lamp that allows you to just disengage from an enemy but not technically evade it, mm -hmm. this is another uh, another way to turn on this card. We got level 2 pickpocketing. 2 to play. Uh, commits for 2 feet instead of 1. Um, this one is fast. And after you evade an enemy, you get to exhaust it to or either draw your card or gain a resource if you succeed by two or more you to do both instead you're probably already planning to uh, pass quote unquote foot tests by a fair amount because of skids ability and this does that too <laughs> so that's good next up we got the 41 derringer um, this is the upgraded version of the corset card three to play two experience commits for a foot and a fist still has three ammo uses still takes up one hand slot as an action, you get to fight, you still get plus two for the attack. And to succeed by one or more, the attack deals plus one damage. And once per turn, if you succeed by three or more, you get an additional action this turn. Um, this one isn't like that much better than the level zero version. Basically giving you uh, an additional action sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's a nice quality of life upgrade as you get into the later game and you can 
if you're really focused on fighting, you can bump your fist score up high enough to trigger that semi consistently. Heck yeah. All right, everyone say it with me. Key of Yeast Key of is good. Yeast. Good, yeah. <laughs> it's good. Good. Um, we're going to say this, this is the new Guts, just so everybody on YouTube knows. We're going to say this. It's a lot shorter than Guts. I like that. Uh, me too. All right, Bryn, why don't you take us into the Forgotten Age? All right. We got you handle this one. It's a zero costed event. You get to play it after you have drawn a counter card. Somebody else drew it. You get a money for it. Uh, two brain bad. <laughs> we got a lucky cigarette case. Uh, normally, I wouldn't go into this one, but this one is particularly good here because we can just run a lightning bolt test at zero. Okay. So we can make sure that we're drawing a card every turn with the cigarette case. Which uh, is better than normal. Uh, we got Hatchet Man. Commits for a foot. If the skill test is successful during an evasion attempt, the next time the evaded enemy takes damage this turn, you deal it an, an extra damage. So, you know, maybe you evade an enemy with this, and then you play your sneak attack, dealing them three damage. Three damage kills a significant number of rather powerful enemies. Uh, we've got Slip Away, which is a two-costed evade. You add your book to your foot. Uh, or, and then, uh, you know, you succeed by two or more, which hopefully you should, because you're getting to test at eight. Uh, and the evaded enemy is non-elite. It doesn't ready during the next upkeep phase. Mm -hmm. it's so we can just use this to ignore somebody forever. Yeah, he's too busy looking for you. You're hid so well. The big snake's like, where's skids? I want to eat skids. <laughs> Where did he go? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got high roller. Uh, this is a two cost, two experience, commits for a book and a fist. As a lightning bolt, you can spend three resources and exhaust high roller. You get plus two skill value for this test. If you succeed, gain three resources. So this has a wide variety of uses in parallel skids. Obviously, I mean, actually, it's really not wide. It has two uses for tests that matter <laughs> and then your ability. Um, actually, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Because, like, it's one of those things where, um, so, for example, um, it's, you're not, in his ability, you're not actually testing your foot score. So, like, Lola isn't going to boost it, the next card that we have here. So, um, you're, you're always testing it at three. So, if you use something like High Roller, you're now testing it at five. It does cost you three resources to do it, but then you can just kind of like ensure you're getting more money, right? Money begets money. That's kind of like the philosophy with the, the second half of all these cards do, because you also still want to function on actually playing the game. But if you ever, like, if there's nothing for you to do, because you're like an enemy skids and you're like, frick it, let's just gamble like crazy. High Roller helps you do that. Here's the first ally. She is a staple. This is the, some of the three uh, experience ones we are talking about it, but just like she's very good with skids here. If you want to be on the um, clue getter side of it, there's also Delilah who is going to come in later who helps really well with the offensive side of skids. Um, but with this one, you can now you get plus one foot here at five. Uh, four book is also like a good number. You can get a lot of two shroud locations, no problem. And now you can also spend the money you got just like, you know, um, doing your own thing to discover clues at your location. And there's also nothing stopping you from getting that charisma we talked about earlier and just getting both of them, right? And then you could kind of just use your money for whatever is best in the moment. We got Skeleton Key, which actually happens to work very nicely with Lola Santiago. So as you get to attach it to your location, it costs four experience because it is exceptional. And then uh, if, when you attach it to your location, you set the attached shrouds, the attached location shroud to one. So now just for the cost of one money, which really doesn't cost you anything, you can just grab a clue off your location. It's juicy. Uh, then we got All In. This is a fortune. Uh, two ex uh, commits for two wild, and if uh, this test is successful, draw one card for each point you succeeded by to a maximum of five, and then shuffle each weakness drawn by this effect back into your deck without resolving it. While Skids is very good with money, he is not as good with, uh, you know, um, cards. So, like, apart from Lucky Cigarette Case, as Bryn talked about, which is a good way of getting cards, this is another way you could do it if you really wanted to load your hand up. Uh, Bryn, 
I think these are yours. Wow, we're really on Circle Undone already? We're killing it. <laughs> we got There's, like, not top. that many cards. They're good in skids compared to other best gears. <laughs> this is mostly true. Uh, this one is fast. We play when we would start a skill test. We get to make it a money test instead of whatever type of test it was before. Uh, our skill value is equal to the number of resources we can we control, like half of them, round it down. Yes. So you can take any kind of test you want and just trivialize it because it doesn't matter. You, you're rich now. Rich. You know, we got swift reflexes, which normally I would never consider playing in a skits file because normal skits just does this all the time for free. Uh, but, uh, it's a two-costed event. It commits for two feet, which is not nothing. Uh, fast play during any investigator's turn, except during an action. Immediately take an action as if it were your turn. It does not count towards the number of actions you can take mm -hmm. each turn. So it's just two do a thing anything at <laughs> many different times we got well connected uh, this one is the pay the best payoff in the game for having a gigantic stack of resources on your character uh, it's just a two costed asset limit one per investigator as a lightning bolt you exhaust it you get plus one skill value for the skill test for every five resources you have now that might sound daunting but how many does it really need to be before it starts to be good and I think the short answer is about 10. Uh, sometimes it gets much, much better than that. Yeah. We've got Cunning, which is another one of the payoffs for having a whole big pile of resource tokens on your card. Uh, and a lot of these cards, like, please, please use dice. I don't want to think about how it would be using tokens. Yeah, I, actually, that's uh, just like that's good advice, just in general for this game. Turn a lot of those tokens into dice. You could buy a lot of cheap dice, colored dice online. You can get like a hundred for like twenty bucks, and it's like even like probably less if you're in America. We have to pay like those Canadian prices. It's just so much easier. Just use dice to count your stuff. I we highly recommend it. Yeah, yeah, but this one, uh, this one commits for a uh, for a. Uh, and while you have five or more resources, it gets plus one of each symbol. And while you have ten or more, it's plus two of each symbol instead. Just, you know, good good for doing things. Mm -hmm. All right, Travis. Why don't you keep this going? Okay. Uh, Circle Undone brings some multicolor cards. We got Tennessee Sour Mash. It's a three cost asset that you can play in green and red decks. Commits for brain. It's got two supply uses. It's a lightning bolt. You can exhaust it and spend a supply to get plus two brain for a skill test on a treachery card. Alternatively, as an action, you can discard it to fight and get plus three punch for the fight. Uh, this is a very nice action uh, option to protect Skids' low brain. Um, the money isn't a huge issue. Um, and as always, when you're playing with the low brain characters, you kind of got to decide whether you're going to actually try to protect it or you're just going to eat the negatives and try and uh, push your advantages in other places. But Skids Sing It too, um it's usually pretty easy to decide to just like push through it when you're playing a one brain character mm -hmm. in most cases. But Skids Sing It too, like offers you a real opportunity to get over some of those tests. So... <laughs> Next up, we have the 45 Thompson. This is a six cost asset that commits for a punch, uses five ammo, takes up two hand slots as an action. You can spend ammo to fight, you get plus two punch and deal plus one damage for the attack. It's just a solid weapon option for skids, especially if you intend to lean into um, fighting very hard. You won't have uh, your other hand slots to play lockpicks or something like that if you're playing this, but if you want to shoot things, this is a pretty solid way to do it. Next up, we got some uh, some fortune cards from other colors. Wow. First up is Fortune or Fate. This one's a survivor card. Two to play, two experience stick in your deck, and commits for wild. Fast, play when Doom would be placed on any scenario card. Max one per game, cancel one Doom just placed on that card, and you exile Feeder Fortune, which will mean you'll have to pay more experience for it later. But uh, the exile isn't too, too harsh if you really want to play this card because of your low deck size. It won't be too hard to max out what you want to upgrade. Um, but yeah, more 
one less doom is one more turn. Yeah. <laughs> which is a lot more actions. Um, and the last one on this page is you catastrophe. It's a two cost event that is also survivor. Three experience put this in your deck, you commit it for two wild symbols. It's fast and you play it when you would reveal a when you reveal a chaos token that would reduce your skill value to zero during a skill test, including the auto fail token, you get to cancel that token and treat it as though it were a star instead. Um, so Skids a star lets you bring back a level two or lower card from your discard pile, probably because of this card. Um, like exactly because of this card. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like anytime you draw an auto fail or like you fail, you can just like. If you're really to get some back from your discard, you can just dump a garbage test into your. Uh, your lightning bolt ability and just fail it. Yep. And make this kind of like. A bad. A better scratch for supplies? Kind of? Yeah, no, yeah. It's what it, I mean, like. It his cost uh, his it costs you money, is good. but like it doesn't take an action, so you know. Yeah, and like the yeah, it's it's we didn't really talk about his elder sign ability, but like it's just good. Like it, it's not really like it's like really good actually. Yeah, but it doesn't like really help his game plan. Like it's just I mean like it does let you get your cards back, but like other than that, like it's just it's just a very strong elder sign ability. Like that's all there is to yeah. it. Man, it would have yep. been wild. Like with if it was three, exactly what Travis is saying, because you can't loop it just off one U catastrophe. But now every U catastrophe you play grabs your other U catastrophe, and then you're just in a U catastrophe loop. If it was three, very good. They good they did too. Very good they did too. Yep. All right, we got the moon. Uh, Eighteen. You get plus one foot. It's one cost. Uh, one experience, three cost. If it begins in your opening hand, you put it into play like all other tarot's. Uh, more foot is good. It's going to be the stat that you're using to interact with the game the most, more than likely. Uh, and, you know, just more of that is good. Also, unlike a lot of other investigators, it's this, the three cost, if you draw it later, is a lot less painful in skids. We have upgraded Tennessee Sour Mash. Three uh, experience now, three cost. If uh, two supplies, it's also fast. You get plus three brain instead of plus two, like the uh, level zero version. And then you discard it, you get plus three fight, plus three fist, and deal plus one damage. So it's just basically more of a good thing. And it makes it so that if you are planning the route where you actually do, like, want to try and stop the Mythos deck, uh, this is a very helpful tool for skids getting there. It puts them to five brain, which is very nice. Uh, upgraded Thompson as well. Uh, it's a uh, five cost three experience spend uh, five ammo when you spend an ammo you fight you get plus two fist and deal plus one damage if you succeed by at least x you may spend one ammo to deal this attack's damage to another enemy or location where x is that enemy's fight value uh, so you can kind of just tun, 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 through enemies the flavor is incredible they've absolutely nailed it i suppose uh, and if you do want to do the thompson as your game plan this is something you could upgrade into yeah that one's also real good with the uh Sure gamble. Yeah, oh yeah. Where you're like, minus four, how about kill you? <laughs> and you! Tunk, 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 tunk. Uh, another okay. day, another dollar. This is a permanent three experience. Uh, you begin the game with two additional resources. If money is your plan, uh, this is a, will be helpful to get you there. Uh, however, this is not a priority upgrade because you're honestly, first turn you're gonna to get to six pretty easily because you're just gonna spend a resource your first resource should just be like all right let's uh flick a coin in the pot and see if we can turn that into two so uh it's not a priority upgrade but it will be helpful later on uh if you do want to get big money quicker all right Bryn, go to you we got uh scrounge for supplies off talked about in hushed tones uh <laughs> Just get a card back. Mm -hmm. oh, level, zero. level zero card back. Yeah. Who's counting? Scratch for supplies. That's who. We got Gregory Gry. Uh, if you like to gamble. <laughs> <laughs> tell you how it goes. You win some, lose some. All the same to me. Oh, uh, my God. I'm <laughs> just... <laughs> Turn one. Gamble a resource. Gamble a resource off Gregory Guy. Fuck it. Let's do a watch yeah. list on this. <laughs> yeah. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, he starts with nine resources, uh, uses nine resources, three costs, soaks one, one meat, two brain. As a reaction, when you initiate a skill test, you can spend up to three resources from Gregory Gry. If this skill test succeeds by at least that much, you gain that many resources. Uh, tell you a secret, he's really bad at gambling. Uh, you're like, hey, I bet I could flip this rat off of a thing into another thing. And you're like, he's like, no, nah, you can't do that. Three money says you can't do that. <laughs> He, you do it. He really does do make it. the worst, the worst yeah. bets. He is kind of bad at it. Uh, we got practice makes perfect. Uh, it's just a gambit. It's really good. Uh, yeah. See see below for more detailed mm-hmm. discussion on why. Then <laughs> we got three aces. Uh, this one's a fortune and it's practiced. It's level one. It's myriad. So uh, you get three of them when you pay for one. It's practiced for the, the card that came before it. Uh, if you commit three copies of three aces to a skill test, that test automatically succeeds. Then draw three cards and gain three resources. Uh, I almost want to play Parallel Skids now just so that I can commit this no. to my Lightning Bolt effect. No. <laughs> like no. purely for ex- to, like. You know, you guys probably know that exasperated noise Travis makes when I do something that's like kind of stupid. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got it out yeah. of me. I knew it was coming. I knew what you were going <laughs> to say. <laughs> like, no, Brent. Um, however, this is not entirely the worst decision because you could just, you know, as a lightning bolt, draw three cards and gain three resources. And if you need mm-hmm. that to further your game plan, you need that to further your game plan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it good? No. But... It might be better than not doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, you, this is also something that you could then, like, uh, if you're in a pinch, you can commit one of these, and then if you have a catastrophe, hey, that three aces is now back in my hand that I spent earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, with Practice Makes Perfect especially, you can really uh, assemble, and you only have 25 cards in your deck. Like, you'll get there no problem. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Travis, I think it's your turn. So I'll pass okay. this one to you. Uh, all right, first up, I guess surviving, fi- surprising find. This is a fortune, and it doesn't actually have a ton of synergy with skids, but it's here because he can he can play it. Um, <laughs> it's a one cost skill that commits for a wild. It's myriad, and when you search your deck, and surprising find is among the search cards you can put to play in your play area. You must commit to the next eligible test you perform. If that test is successful, draw one card. Maximum research ability per search. Um, Skiz doesn't have like a ton of ways to search through his deck. There are a couple. Um, probably the most notable being like upgraded Lucky Cigarette Case that mm-hmm. we'll get to in a bit. Um, but this is like just a really nice card for him if you can reliably trigger it, where it commits for the wild symbol and draws you cards, both of which are things that you want. So. Yeah, because even like the worst case of drawing a surprising find ain't bad in Skids because now it means you're testing like four to two for your. Uh... Uh, lightning bolt ability and because your deck's so small if you play practice makes perfect you're gonna see one of these two so like if that's what you want and you want your deck to be super thin that's an option mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up we got easy mark this is a, another one experience myriad card this one's zero to play commits for a book or a foot you gain two resources and draw a card and as a reaction uh, you can after you play the easy mark you can play another easy mark from your hand at no cost. So you can chain these together if you get a bunch of them. Uh, significantly easier for skids because of his low, well not significantly, but noticeably because of his low deck size. You're more likely to find them. So Great resource engine, great card yeah. draw engine. Yeah, plus if you've got one in your discard pile and you draw your star token and you draw a different one, you just now, you like you got two of them now. Mm, yeah. Then we got Momentum level 1. This is a skill card that commits for a wild. And if the test is successful, you reduce the difficulty of the next skill test you perform this phase by X, where X is the amount this skill test succeeded by to a maximum of 3. Uh, this is also practiced. If you play practice, it makes perfect. Um, but this one is really another one of like the really strong enablers for Skids' ability, where you can do like some Garbo test, and then do your next test easy. You can do, I think this will work rule-wise, where you can uh, 
during like the mythos phase, if you draw a brain test, you can initiate Skids' ability to do a test, like a, a foot test, basically. Commit this to it, and then like do really well on that test, and then make the brain test easy. I think so. I think because there's a timing window before you make a test. Yeah, there's like one before you commit cards and after you commit cards, I think. Yeah. So, that's neat. That Tell is me if neat. it's wrong. But, and then we got Delilah O'Rourke, who is the mirror to Lola Santiago. Uh, three experience, three to play, commits for the fist and the foot. She can take three hearts and two brains, takes up the alley slot. She gives you plus one fist and plus one foot, and as a lightning bolt, you can exhaust her and spend X resources to choose an enemy at your location to deal one damage to the chosen enemy, or two damage if the enemy is exhausted, where X is the chosen enemy's evade value. She just shoots people for you and gives you another use for your money. Heck yeah. Oh, Garot Wire. So this is a two-cost, two-experience uh, asset that takes up the accessory slot. As a lightning bolt during your turn, you can exhaust and then fight. You get plus two uh, fist for this attack. Use only on an enemy with exactly one health. If you do want to go into combo skids, I mean, sorry, not, not combo skids, fighter skids, um, this would be um, the card that you could use to further just get more damage output going. Uh, really good at choking out rats. All right, we are in to the Innsmouth Conspiracy. Uh, unlike the previous ones, we're not going to talk about the cursed archetypes. The the stuff's going to still be there if you want to <clears throat> build curse, but like it's not too notable. Sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> with skids, um, so we're just talk talk about some cards that we think are good with skids. First one right here is Faustian Bargain. This card's incredible. Go check out the Staples video if you want to figure out why. If you also want to figure out why, just like read the card. <laughs> Zero cost, five resources with a very minor downside. Especially in skids, because you get a free test each turn to eat curse tokens. Wow. What uh, a country. Yeah, next one here is we got breaking and entering. It's a two cost. Investigate, add your foot skill uh, value to the skill test. If you succeed by two or more, you may automatically evade an enemy at your location. This action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Uh, pretty easy to uh, succeed by two when you're testing at seven without any other modifiers. Uh, very strong card. Two cost is nothing for skids as well. Uh, so it can play very nicely in him. Uh, 40, uh, the 25 automatic, the level zero, uh, fast, uses four ammo. Spend an ammo to fight. If the attacked enemy is exhausted, you get plus two fist and deal plus one damage for this attack. This is a great placeholder for the level two version, which let's go talk about now because that's the exciting one. Uh, so two, uh, four cost still. <clears throat> two experience, fast, four ammo, spend an ammo, fight. If the attacked enemy is exhausted, you get plus two fist and deal plus one damage for this attack. Whoa, Justin, didn't you just read the same thing to me again? No, because after you evade an enemy or location, you can perform the above fight ability without spending an action. Uh, when you're playing with the basic, the level 0, 25 automatic, you're going to be in a lot of situations where you... Uh, evade an enemy and then you're like, it, like you just have to spend an action to evade an enemy and then an action to shoot it kind of just feels a little bit clunky and this one just solves that problem in a beautiful way and then you're just like dodge blat blat and it just feels so sick okay Bryn why don't you keep this going we got the eye of the gene uh, so this one is uh, two cost of level two exceptional asset it commits for two book which is not nothing Mm -hmm. um, takes up one of your hand slots as a reaction when you initiate a skill test during your turn you can exhaust eye of the gene set your base skill value to five for the test if a blessed token is revealed during this test ready eye of the gene if a curse token is revealed during this test you may take an additional action this turn so the secret of the about this card is that that last bit the blessed tokens and the curse tokens that's flavor text mm -hmm. It's not there to tell you what the card does. What this card does is it lets you turn one of your kind of not so good numbers into a five, which is much, much better. You can even use it to gamble better if you really want to. Yes. Uh, you know, don't let anyone stop you. But it does, it does let you fight at five. It lets you investigate at five. You can't brain against the mythos at five because it's only during your turn. But hey, you know. It's good that the card doesn't do everything. Mm -hmm. We got yeah, the Shrine of the Moron, card, right? right? <laughs> hmm? Yeah, yeah. Well, these aren't yellow cards. 
Yeah, yeah calm down, Justin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we got Shrine of the Mora. It's a one costed event. It is level three. It commits for almost a while. Uh, it's fortune blessed, cursed. You attach it to your location, uses three offerings. Attached location gains Lightning Bolt, draw the top card of the encounter deck, exhaust Shrine of the, Mor of the Morai, and spend one offering. Return up to two cards with a total combined cost of five, or total combined level of five or less, and discard that to your hand. So, you know, drawing this is like drawing cards with extra steps. Uh, only you get to pick what those cards are. Mm hmm. And uh, I just want to throw this out there, uh, but any com almost any combination of two luckies is going to be level five or less. Yeah, There's only one true. of them that isn't. That's true. Uh, and how many luckies do you really need to be playing in a single scenario before it doesn't matter what the game's doing? I think the number is three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's actually not as high as you might think. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's move on to Edge of the Earth, and Travis, before you take these ones, I'm just going to say for everyone watching at home, we haven't played with these cards, we're still, so if we're like reading them slowly, you're, we're learning with you. So just, uh, Travis, why don't you talk about these four cards? Yeah, these are green cards from the new set. <laughs> <clears throat> um, first up, we got 21 or bust. This one's a 4chan and Gambit, so it must be good in skids. You can play both of those. This it's is what we call bad. Like he's just filling punch. space. Yeah. Foot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one at a time, you reveal tokens from the chaos bag until you choose to stop. You treat each symbol token as a five, the auto fail is a ten, and the star is either a one or eleven. And if the combined total of these tokens, ignoring the the actual number ones, of course, is eighteen or less, you gain four resources. If it's nineteen you get five. If it's twenty you gain six and if it's twenty one you gain nine. Whoa. And if it's more than twenty one you get nothing. Yeah. Cause you cause um, you're boss. Yeah. You're just playing poker. Blackjack. Um, blackjack. You're playing blackjack. Blackjack is poker. No, it's blackjack. That's blackjack. No, blackjack is, is not poker. Is it not just a, a derivative of poker? No, no, it's no. it's its own game. No, it's its own game. Okay. So, you know, it's a it's math gambling game. Cards are all like basically the same. Yeah, they're all the same thing. <laughs> yeah, the difference is you're not actually playing against another man. You're playing against the deck and like doing math to make sure that you know when you're going to win and not. Yeah. yeah okay. Whatever. Yeah. This card's like fun. I don't think it's good that good, but like it's fun and it's what skids. You're already gambling, so why not? Yeah. yeah do it. <laughs> yeah. Next up, we got Scout Ahead. This is a one cost event. It commits for two foot. It's an insight and a trick. You can tell this card's going to be good because it's an insight, which is the yellow subtype. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's a move action. You get to move up to three times. Enemies do not engage you during this movement. It's you just go where you need to go. Dude, it's that's, that's so much shade. You know that you know how this green card's going to be good because it's actually a yellow card. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at four one or bust. It's a fortune and a gambit, dude. Yeah, no, it, yeah, but scout ahead is. An incredible card in, in, in like one yeah. year's time when we're doing these videos for other investigators this is probably going to have the elder sign on it for a staple yeah 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 uh next up we got underworld support this is a permanent limit one per deck you purchase it only at deck creation and your deck not include more than one copy of each non-weakness non-secure card by title you reduce your deck size by five i personally think this card is exceptionally neat in skids because it lowers his deck size by 20 percent from 25 down to 20, which makes you very likely to be able to draw into um, powerful, exceptional cards in your deck. Yeah, and it, it also doesn't... Um, the, if you do go into multiples of the Fortune or Gambits through his additional options, it doesn't override the Underworld support either. You can still only have one copy of Lucky Toe. Yes. Yes, that makes sense. But... Uh, and the last card we have here is level 0 ethereal slip. This is a two cost event that commits for a brain and a foot. It's a spell and a trick. You choose a non elite enemy at a reveal location, but two locations away, and you swap places with that enemy. This is like a fun card. Mm -hmm. um, in most cases, running something like Scout Ahead is probably going to be better for you, but this one does have some niche uh, applications to it, like if. 
you know, your clue getter. If you're playing like two players and you're like kind of the main fighter and then you've got like an Ursula or Finn or something like that, who's going to be your main clue getter? Um, and there's like a particularly tough non elite monster, like a deep one bull or something like that, you can just dump him a little ways away mm -hmm. and continue on your way. But in general, it, it's. It's weird because it's not an evasion card. It's not. It's almost an evasion card. It's not really a movement card, but it's almost a movement card, and the symbols aren't great. So, yeah, it's kind of in a. It's in a. I have to. I have to see how this one actually plays before I can really know about it. It's going to be like the literally the first time you see it is going to determine whether it's good or not. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. Um. It's going back to Underworld support. I think you can have two luckies if you do upgrade through his ability. Yeah, but you can't choose to upgrade that card into like you can't choose to put that card into your deck because you have like you're not allowed to include it, right? Like you have to remove that card to upgrade into the new one. Otherwise, you're not allowed to include the new one. Um. But his additional options, I think, overrides Underworld support, doesn't it? Because it says you know. may instead, so then it's like not following the normal rules, and it does not count towards deck size or the number of copies of that card in your deck. Yeah, then maybe. YouTube, give us some insight. Because <laughs> I actually don't know for sure. That's just my reading, help. but... Help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Send help, please. <laughs> All right, we got Hit Me. This is a one-cost Fortune Gambit. Uh, fast play after you reveal a chaos token during a skill test. Reveal initial chaos token, switching its minus to a plus. If that token is a skull token, you automatically fail. Uh, there's that weird skull token synergy, the synergy in Survivor that we've only seen on a few cards. <laughs> and behold, it's the anti-Jim. Um, yeah. <laughs> what does Jim hate? Jim hates gambling and baseball bats. Um, yeah. Cards, uh, just more of the, uh, um... Like, kind of like that um, sure gamble, but just, like, less sure. Just kind of more just gamble, right? More gamble, less yeah. sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, we got Black Market. Excuse me while I read this card. This is a two, <laughs> one cost, two experience. <laughs> Play at the starting investigation phase. One at a time, reveal cards at the top of any investigator's deck until exactly five cards have been revealed. Set those cards aside out of play while set aside any investigator may play any of those cards as if they were in their hand. At the start of the next investigation phase, shuffle each of those cards set aside into its owner's deck. That card sure is neat and fun, but I don't think it's particularly good. So, but I'm what excited. What are you talking about? Because kids makes lots of money. And you can use it to pay for things. This, yeah. is, this is like one one draw five. <laughs> um, I'm very much looking forward to Bryn playing this card, though. <laughs> I think that's gonna be fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Our ultimate goal here is to play Pete before Justin gets to. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, this next one here, Counter Espionage, is gonna be is gonna be great in Skidzo Tool. So play when you draw a non weakness treachery. Cancel that card's revelation effect and draw the top card of the encounter deck. This card costs two and it's one experience. It also commits for two brain, which is not as like if you need to, but you also could just like cancel the card. Uh, when you play it as well, you can increase its cost by two to change the encounter deck to your deck. And when you play counter espionage, increase its cost by two to change you to any investigator. Um, so basically for four, you can just turn a treachery card into you just draw a card instead, um, which is nice. You could use this on other people, but that's not really the green thing to do. Uh, you kind of just want to like keep yourself safe. Then we got the upgraded money talks. It's two experience now. When any when an investigator at any location initiates a skill test as opposed to just you, instead of the skill type indicated, it's a resource skill test. You uh, base skill value is equal to half of your resources in your resource pool rounded down, and then you draw a card. Sweet. Yeah, just more money talks. And it's for any investigator, uh, and it's... Uh, it's your resource pool, so it's like you can help people with your money. So then you can help someone and be like, look, my money did something that actually helped. And, you know, feel good about that. Uh, Bryn, I think it's you. All right, we got Moxie level three. This one commits for two brain or two foot, which are both quite reasonable things. Uh, it's zero costed fast, limit one composure in play. We get plus one brain and plus one foot. Now, admittedly, plus one brain 
I mean, like the difference between two and three is like, we're still going to have to do something else to make it better, but we don't have to do anywhere near as much. Uh, and speaking of something else, we can uh, spend resources from our resource pool to uh, get plus one brain or plus one foot. Uh, we also have to assign damage or horror that we take to Moxie before we're allowed to assign it to ourselves. But that's okay. Zero fast for a 3 1 soak is, even if that's all it did, mm -hmm. that'd be pretty all right. Yeah, I think this card's bonkers. Not, maybe bonkers yeah. is a bit too much. More like. <laughs> I think it's just really good. With it is. It does appear to be quite solid. Yeah. Uh, we got Savant, which is a one cost, uh, one experience skill. Commits for a wild. It gains wild icons equal to your lowest skill, other than the skill being tested. Uh, so, like, it's mostly three wild icons. Yeah. Unless you're testing brain, in which case it is four. Which is uh, probably where you want to use this card yeah. for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, you can use it for an important punch or an important investigate or even an important evade if you really need to. Uh, you know, and you'll get you'll get plus three wild symbols. Mm -hmm. it's not so bad, right? Like you're you're getting plus three to your number, so you're either six six or seven. And if you're testing your brain, uh, then you get to test brain at six too. Yeah, it also it's can kind of okay. It also can be good with a really important gamble test too. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because uh, there are such things. I promise. <laughs> no, this this card just seems like a strong green card, and I bet once we've uh, once we've played with it a bit, ways down the road, it'll be in the in the staples pile. Ooh. Uh, I mean, one of the, the things the green struggles with so most is protecting you. your protecting your brain score. Yeah, and uh, this does that pretty well. We got the red clock, level two. It's exceptional, so it costs four to put in your deck. Force when your turn begins, either place one charge here or take all the charges here as resources. Then if it has exactly one charge, you get plus three skill value for your next skill test. Two charges, you may move up to two times. Three charges, you may take an additional action this turn. It takes up your necklace slot, but uh, you know, all of those effects seem good, even the one where you just get to gain three resources and move on with your life. Um, and we've got the there's a level 5 one which I think is the first level what is effectively level 10 card in the game um, nope as like printed. as printed yes yeah yeah, yeah. As printed, yeah. Yes. I'm not counting the key of ease because we're not talking about taboo lists here today key of ease <laughs> uh, this one commits for too wild but like don't <laughs> like, actually for don't. an unexpected career <laughs> yeah Please, please do what not do, you do really that. really need that money, dude? <laughs> yeah. I really got a gamble. I need the money, man. <laughs> then maybe you got a problem. And you good, should... good point, Travis. That's a good rebuttal. <laughs> Go talk to Carolyn Fern about it. Uh, this one's the same, except for the effects you get for the, the number of charges on it. One charge is plus four skill value. Two charges is you may move up to three times, which if that doesn't get you where you need to go, like what the hell happened? Uh, and three charges is you get two additional actions this turn. Uh, actions are really good. Uh, and then, yeah, this one looks like it also, no matter what baseline, it's giving you plus four for your next skill test. Because it's you may take all charges here as resources and place one charge here. So no oh, matter yeah, what, yeah, okay, no, it does. So then you know, like this is yeah, it's not it's not either it's not either gamble at seven. Right. Let's go. <laughs> let's go, baby. Yeah. So anyway, the moral of the story is don't commit it for two to gamble. Play it and then use four to gamble. Yeah. There we go. Uh, <laughs> card seems cool though. Yeah. Card seems cool. All right. Um. It's uh, my turn? Or is it Travis's turn? How long have we been talking about Edge of the Earth cards? It's Travis's turn. Travis, here you go. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the Black Fan. This is another exceptional item. Three to play. Three Level three, but six experience put in your deck. Commits for Bookfoot Wild. 
takes up all your hand slots and while you have 10 or more resources you get plus one health and sanity while you have 15 or more resources you get an extra action during each turn and while you have 20 or more resources you get plus one to each of your skills wow this is really good if you just want to hoard your money <laughs> this is there for that big that big uh big money deck mm-hmm. next up we have uh fend off which is a gambit um so uh, yeah i was actually looking for these when i did the the off color ones which helped me <laughs> Two to play, three experience to put in your deck, commits for two feet, which is kind of odd for a red card, but... And fast, you play when a non-elite enemy spawns your location, that enemy attacks you, then you automatically evade the enemy, attach fend off to it, attached enemy cannot ready. So this card's like, you take an attack, but in exchange, you probably don't ever have to deal with that enemy ever again. Mm-hmm. And depending on the scenario, you might have also reduced your deck size by one permanently. Which is... Probably good. Next up, we got uh, two versions of Blur. Um, this can actually play these, right? Level zero to five, yeah. Okay, yeah, good. They were golden. <laughs> um, oh, the other guys, a lot of the other parallel guys are zero to three, so yeah. I thought double check. Uh, the there's a level one version that commits for a foot, takes up your arcane slot, which has absolutely no competition, really. Um, three uses. As charges as an action, if blurs, charges remain, you get to evade. For the evasion attempt, you may use your brain to stay your foot, but probably don't. And you get plus one skill value. If you succeed, you can spend... If you succeed, you have to spend a charge, and you may take an additional action this turn. If you succeed by zero, you take damage. The level four version commits free brain in addition to the foot. Comes with four charges instead of three. Uh, You get plus two skill value for the evasion attempt that you're making. And... um, when you succeed, you can spend one or two charges to take that many additional actions this turn. And if you succeed by zero, though, you take two damage. Really. Um, if you're playing like an invasion-oriented deck, this is a pretty solid way to make yourself into Finn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can also use these to evade the upgraded one in particular to evade a guy, and then just feed it to him with a twenty-five automatic. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like pump three bullets into yep. him that turn. Yeah. Yep. Are we free of Edge of the Earth? No, we're still in it, baby. Never. Actually, never, Justin. There's yeah. so many cards that every investigator can play from this cycle. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, upgraded Ethereal Slip. It's a two experience now, one consequence for Brain Foot Foot. Choose a non-elite enemy at any revealed location and swap places with that enemy. So if two locations weren't enough for you, on especially on big mapped scenarios, this can be... Pretty nice. Uh, then you also have a reason if, if you need to get back. So just, once again, this one we're kind of still like, we'll see how it works, but m- that much movement is pretty powerful packed into one card. Speaking of a powerful card, we got, uh, Travis, say the name. <laughs> uh, Jeanne Beauregard. There we go. All right, five cause, three experience. She commits for a book and a foot. And you get plus one book and plus one foot, which, you know, are very relevant stats. Uh, see Lola. Uh, as a reaction, during your turn, after you move to a location, you can exhaust her to move a clue or a non-elite enemy from a connecting location to your location or vice versa. How strong she is in uh, parallel skids kind of still remains to be seen. But I think if you are building the clue skids, this is another good tool. Especially, like, if you have, like, it's expensive, but money doesn't matter to you. Her and Lola Santiago, you now have five book and six foot. You also need a charisma, but you're going to buy a charisma if that's your plan anyway. Uh, and that kind of seems a little a little juicy. We have two precious mementos. They both cost three. They both have four experience. They both commit for two wilds, but they both do slightly different things. Uh, the From a former life, uh, it's uh, after... If you fail a skill test by two or more, exhaust it to heal one damage. And after you succeeded a skill test by two or more, exhaust it to heal one hero, uh, horror. And then it's the inverse. If you fail a skill test by two or more, you heal a horror. After you've succeeded a skill test by two or more, you heal a damage. And they each soak for three and three. Um, these can provide some fantastic healing. You have like less horror as well. So taking the one that has the from a former life and you <laughs> succeed by two or more, now your free action each turn also can just read heal one horror. Uh, yeah, why, with your ability, they just make you like unkillable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have, uh, have a relic hunter, you got both of them in play. See Alan coming from uh, Goldeneye. Yeah. <laughs> I'm invincible! <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, 
And like also there's some times now where like you fail your gamble and now it's like you can still maybe just get some value out of it. I think, yeah, these are pretty nutty in uh, parallel skids. All right, Bryn, the last two cards for Edge of the Earth, I'll pass to you. Yeah. We got a quick draw holster. It's a four-costed asset. It's level four, which is fairly hefty. It takes up your body slot. You can commit it for two foot or a punch, but given that you have paid four experience for it, yeah, you know, don't unless it's real important. Mm -hmm. As a lightning bolt, you choose a firearm asset that takes up only one hand in your play area. You attach it to the quick draw holster and yeah, you know, or swap it with the one that is currently attached to it. So you're never locked into which one is attached to it. You can always change it later. I put glue in my holster. Oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway. It uh takes up no hand slots and as a lightning bolt you can exhaust the quick draw holster to perform a fight action on it ignoring the uh action cost mm -hmm. so you know sometimes you just want to put a lot of bullets into something and this uh this will help you do it plus uh you know gives you some extra some extra hand slot so maybe you've got an eye of the gene but you also want to have guns and lock picks you know Body slot is worth less. Not Dude. worthless, but less. This unscrupulous loan seems the unscrupulous wild loan money is skids. A... Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so it's a zero-costed level three event. It's a pact. Limit one per investigator. Cannot leave play. After you play unscrupulous loan, take ten. Re you gain ten resources forced when the game ends or you are eliminated. If you have fewer than ten resources in your resource pool, Exile unscrupulous loan. Uh, I mean, like, you know, ten money's a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, which also, on the downside, ten money is a lot of money. But you're playing green cards. You'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, and, this card's like super important yeah. for the big money fizz or or skids archetype. You yeah. can. It just jump starts you to like yeah. the tier one of the the fan, oh my and God. you're gonna find it. You've twenty five cards in your deck, dude. Like yeah, and if, if you're doing the underworld skids too, like that's that's nutty. Yeah, yeah. Even even if all you're doing with this card is playing it, putting ten resources on it, and being like, I'm never spending these. These are just always in my pool. Yeah, because now your well like, connectors are also like yeah. on and going. It's not valueless. Wow. That's going to be nutty. I also like the headcanon where it's like good skids. He's taking this loan out to pay his mom's hospital bill as opposed to using it to gamble. <laughs> I swear, mom, this yeah. is for you. Roll the dice. Let's go. <laughs> All right, Travis, why don't you take us into the return two boxes? Uh, we got level two hard knocks from the return two core set. This is uh, zero to play, commits for two punch, two fist, and lightning bolt. You can spend a resource to gain a fist or a foot for a test. It's just, it's, the level zero ones at this point, I'm pretty sure, basically unplayable, provided you have like a real, a decent size collection. But this is still a pretty solid option, just as a money sink, if you are doing those kinds of tests consistently. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't have the money when you draw it, it still commits for good symbols. Next up, we got Hot Streak level two. It's a bit of an intermediary, uh, and by that I mean you can just play both because your skid's parallel, I guess. It's fortune. This one only costs two resources or two experience to put in your deck, and it costs you five resources to play instead of the three. And it just gives, still gives you ten resources. It's sweet. It's a lot of money. Next up, we got level three stealth. This is a two cost asset that is level three. Commits for two feet. As a lightning bolt during your turn, you can exhaust it to evade. The chosen enemy gets negative to evade for this evasion attempt, and if you successfully evade the enemy, you disengage from it, but do not exhaust it until the end of your turn. The enemy cannot disengage with you. This is a very selfish way to get away from enemies, <laughs> um, but it is very good at triggering certain effects that care about uh, evasion or not being engaged with enemies. It's a very consistent way to do that. Lastly, we have... Well, actually, there's one more after this, I think. But this is the Knight of Swords, level 3 tarot card from Return to the Circle and Done. This one costs 3 to play, or like all tarot cards, if you start with it, it's free. And as a reaction, when you succeed a skill test, you can 
Uh, oh, you don't have to exhaust it. You just get plus one skill value for test. So you always succeed by at least one. And you may discard Knight of Swords to get plus three instead. The always succeeding by plus one is really nice with some cards like Blur. So you'll mm -hmm. never, ever take damage from it. Yep. Um, it's, you just always succeed by one more. So many green cards are like, did you succeed by enough? <laughs> yeah, like like Travis's favorite. Watch this. Yeah, this is even unique. You get two of these babies in play because you're playing oh, like Moon Pen or something like that, uh, and your opportunists never go away unless you fail the test. Oh my and you're God. always getting extra actions, and your guys are always chumps. Yeah, they're always chumps. Your forty one derringers are always firing off extra actions for you. Like, oh baby. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, no, sorry. I was just looking at Hot Streak again and just being like, how the heck does Faustian Bargain exist? Oh my god. All right, we got Well Connected, level three. Two cost, it's a condition. Uh, limit one per investigator. Air exhaust it, you get plus one skill value for the skill test for every four resources you have, and you can spend two resources to ready it. Um, strong. Yes, if you want to play well connected to level zero and you're going to get value out of it, you might as well upgrade it because it like just gets better in every way. It's usually how upgrading cards goes. That's the hope, yeah. <clears throat> yep. All right, I'll keep us going into the uh, starter deck boxes because I only just... There's not talk. too much here if I remember correctly. Yeah, no, it's pretty... We're close to the end. We're almost through with parallel skids. We got upgraded liquid I found, two experience commits for book, book, foot. Uh, after you fail a skill test by three or less while investigating, which happens to be your number, you get to discover two clues from among your location and connecting locations. So just like it, just following that thought process of well connected, an upgraded card is better. This one's just better all around. So if you want the base one, it's part of your strategy. You want to upgrade into this. It's also a fortune, so you can even keep the base ones in your deck still uh, with uh, parallel skits because he's cheating. Um, we got level three lucky. This is a staple. Um, going back to that comment earlier, six luckies. You can do it. Wow, so many. Um, yeah, it's just more of a very good thing. Never fail a test again. Never, never again. Uh, copycat. This is a three cost skill commits for a while. After you commit a copycat to a skill, uh, search the discard pile of another investigator for a skill you can commit to this test and commit it. After this test ends, place that card on the bottom of its owner's deck. Just take someone else's stuff and do something cool with it. Sounds kind of fun if you wanted to do that, right? Uh, could potentially open up some things to kind of like bust a few things for a, a skill test or two, which is uh, kind of fun. Uh, it's a gambit. It is a gambit, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then we got Daring Maneuver, the upgraded one. When you would succeed a skill test, it's two uh, experience. You get plus three skill value for this test and draw a card. So if you want to be on the succeed, succeed by X, this will help you do it even more consistently. Bryn, why don't you take these guys? We got upgraded cheap shot. So this one is a two costed event. We fight, we add our foot value to our skill eight value for the attack. If we succeed by one or more, we automatically evade the attacked enemy. If we succeed by three or more, we return cheap shot to our hand at the end of the turn. So like, you know, our punch number and our foot number are both pretty okay uh, we probably don't need too much to be succeeding by three fairly consistently uh, especially if i don't know we've got like some knight of swords or something <laughs> i've got the mauser c96 good gun is good mm -hmm. uh, probably one of the best one-handed green weapons in the game it's it's why it's the only gun that made our staple video <laughs> yes yeah. Uh, we got slip away. Uh, this one is the same same as the cheap shot. Uh, we the same difference as the cheap shot to the level zero is what I should say. Uh, it's two cost evade. Add your book to your value. If you succeed by one or more, and the evaded enemy is not elite, it doesn't ready uh, during the next upkeep phase. If you succeed by three or more, you get to return slip away to your hand at the end of your turn. Again, we've got a pretty good book score. We've got a pretty good foot score. Succeeding by one or more is not a challenge. Succeeding by three or more is very doable. We got manual dexterity. This is like one of the best cards for cheating and gambling in the game. <laughs> uh, commits for three foot. Max one committed per skill test. If this test is successful, you get to draw one card, two cards instead, if it succeeds by two or more. 
that. Sick. Yeah, kind of just, I mean, like, it's not, it's obviously not a priority upgrade because you need to be buying the cards that make your deck do things first. <laughs> but uh, you use your foot score for a lot of things. All right, are we free? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Almost. Uh, Bryn, why don't you finish this, these ones because sure. Travis is going to do the deck list coming up. We got the Lucky Cigarette Case Level 3. This one commits for two brain. Uh, and like like before, I wouldn't normally go too much into detail with this, but with this card, the difference is that you get to look at the top X, where X is the number you succeeded by. You can just run a free difficulty zero test every turn. Yeah. Like, yep. Yeah. That's, that's nice. Uh, we got the upgraded backstab. It is actually, you know, same as the first, except that if we succeed the attempt by two or more, we get to return it to our hand at the end of the turn. It's a fairly solid fighting option, a little on the expensive side, but, uh, you know, this next guy kind of fixes that. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Chuck Fergus. He's a level five green ally. He costs three. He commits for symbols, but do not, <laughs> if you have included him in your deck... <laughs> This is possibly the worst decision you could make. What if I already have one in play, Bryn? Well, that one might die. And uh, if you're playing with him, you need him. What if, if you... I'll die? Well, then we'll die. You, you should probably die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. If you got, if you got a pick, Travis will remember this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, he doesn't actually have any passive buffs or anything what he does have is a reaction where when you play a tactic or a trick event you exhaust chuck fergus to choose two that event gains fast that event costs two fewer resources to play or you get to plus two skill value while performing a skill test during the resolution of that event so we can use this guy for like you know for playing backstab with it we can fight it fast, we can fight paying one and getting plus two. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things you can do with this that are really cool. You can play <laughs> if an enemy spawns at your location and you don't really want to spend actions dealing with it, you can play it to play a breaking and entering for free. Yeah. Just like literally free. Yeah. Uh, he does, uh, you, you're going to know when you want to play with this guy. But like, man, when he's good, he's good. <laughs> Yeah, you're probably gonna be building like. A, you're probably going to intend to play him from the yeah from the uh, get go. The conception of your deck, not like he's not some guy that you're like four snares in. You're like, oh, I guess I'll put Chuck. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have a, I have a, yeah. I bought a charisma a while ago. I guess I'll put this Chuck in here too. <laughs> yeah, no, but like when when he is good, he feels like you're cheating. Oh yeah. Which right. is what powerful green cards should feel like. Yeah. Travis. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, just a very super generic parallel skids deck. Um, again, it's intended to be able to go in multiple different directions. If you intended to build towards a certain archetype, you could probably build a little better level zero deck for that than this one. Um, but this is one that you could just start with and maybe change up one or two cards and it'd be pretty acceptable for anything. We got lock picks and the Mauser, so you can actually do things. That's pretty important. Um, getting clues and fighting enemies, both good, good things. Um, we got lucky cigarette case, as mentioned several times in the video. Card draw is like the thing that Skids kind of struggles with a little bit. Well, at least he struggles with economy-wise. We got Gregory guy. I chose to put this guy in the deck, uh, even though he is not the best green ally. But Leo Luca costs six, and there's a lot of other expensive cards in the level zero version of this deck. Lots of other assets you want to be playing. And he uh, provides a little bit of soak, but also, you know, gives you more money. Mm -hmm. Got two copies of Tennessee Sour Mash, and this is one of the concessions to uh, Skids' low brain. And it help you. You don't need to pass every brain test. You're going to fail some of them, of course. But, like, you can't afford to be frozen for your most games. You can't just sit there and have one less action every turn. That'll lose you the game. I beg to differ. <laughs> It'll lose you the game. Uh, and then we got two copies of Well Connected for that big money archetype. Um, if you decide you want to move into that, this is a great way to capitalize on just having money as well as to help mitigate his brain score a little bit. 
two copies of you handled this one. I, this is like the other real concession. This kid's is the last one to his brain. Or you can just give away bad brain cards and make someone else do with them. Two daring maneuvers. Um, just commit for two foot most of the time. Um, they also help trigger your succeed by stuff, including your lightning bolt if you really need that money. Too lucky because it's argue lucky is probably like the best card this kid gets. Skids gets to play, and like being able to play like six copies of Lucky in your deck is a very strong reason to be playing Skids over other investigators. Um, at the start of the video, I mentioned that like he does everything like he does a lot of the green archetypes pretty good, but not as good as another investigator. And this is like so you need something else to like justify playing him. This could easily be that thing. Um, on the lamb because we have to. One copy of Cunning is like just a little bit of support for that uh, resource archetype. And like to be honest, that could be pretty much any other card. That could be a <laughs> unexpected courage. Like it could actually be anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he has a deck size of twenty five, so I need one more card. Yeah, you need you need a one of. <laughs> yeah, we got Manual Dexterity and Nimble because those are like foot boosting cards. Um. Which is your lightning bolt ability? Yeah, you can commit foot stuff to that, and I believe, yeah, you can like use nimble to cheese a free move action out of your lightning bolt. Yep. Just pretty sweet. Yeah, you can use and then nimble to thinking, cheese so many free move actions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you don't have to spend an yeah. action on it. Right? Yeah, and then quick thinking is just is quick thinking is real good. Kind of a controversial question, Trap. So why did you choose to include hospital deaths and a random basic weakness in this deck list? Uh, well, if you check the backside, if you're choosing to play with the parallel skids deck building um, stuff, it actually says you have to include those in your deck, Justin. Dang, I thought you were just like, you were like flexing on like us. Like on the lamb. <laughs> if I could not play on the lamb, but also not play hospital deaths, I would. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can check the deck list down in the description below. In addition, uh, for everyone who's still watching now, I just want to say thank you for watching the video and a huge thank you to all of our patrons. Uh, it's been two weeks since the Patreon launched while well, the time you guys watch this, but it's only been one week in our time, in YouTube time. Uh, and we've doubled in that time for our patrons, and I just want to say thank you so much. And if you want to support the channel, you can check the description link for our Patreon, uh, and you can get cool things such as voting uh, and inputting on the order in which we release certain videos, um, as well as getting some exclusive videos um, occasionally on the channel. Uh, and then also when we run Patreon game nights, you can join us and play with those as well. Um, uh, I say mostly just it's we're going to be doing a test run. I'm going to be running some Eldritch Horror with some of our patrons. So if you want to play Eldritch Horror, you should come check out the Patreon page and give that us uh, a little support. Uh, in addition, it also just helps the channel and helps us make more videos. So thank you so much, and thank you for everyone who's watching. Like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we love you, and as always, uh, I guess next week we're going to be here with Diana Stanley, so that's going to be fun. She's our next expanded investigator. We actually know these in advance this time, as opposed to me just on the day of being like, who do I want to make the slides for today? <laughs> so uh, next week we'll be doing Diana Stanley. We'll see you guys then. Have a good one, and as always... GG's.